The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. Wild Wild West. Wild Wild, Wild West. West. Well, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. This is Brent. I'm Drew. And I'm Alex. And guess what? It's schoolhouse time. Oh, no. So, sit down and shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going back to the basics today. Okay. And and mainly because a lot of times when, especially with cryptocurrencies, you know, you get into the to the nuts and bolts and the, the ethereal type stuff and the software and the, the this gyration and that gyration, and then you start to lose reality, okay? Yeah, the rabbit hole. The rabbit yeah, hole. The, and rabbit the other hole. problem is, is that a lot of the kids that are involved in kids, because I'm I'm 60, so I can say that <laughs> a lot of the kids that are involved in this stuff don't really get much of an education, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So that's why they got to come to the schoolhouse. There okay? you go. Because the basic stuff that we learned, they don't teach anymore. Hey, folks, let me tell you something. This schoolhouse, if you if you haven't watched this on uh, YouTube or whatever, this schoolhouse is kind of like a little house on the prairie. I mean, this is old <laughs> school. You know? well, it's not yeah. even about crypto. It's it's about finances and money and how the system works. And that's that's why I, I, I sit here with it. It's a great... I, I, I don't know if you could see it, but I stare at him the whole time. Well, and teaches, yeah. I'm, I'm genuinely learning something that I don't know. Well, <laughs> and, and for those that are listening to us on the radio, driving down the road, you know, go to our website, the Wild West Crypto Show dot com and, and go back to the first series. You bet. You know, the first uh, 12, 13 weeks, because we did a lot of basic education on cryptocurrency, which we'll come back to. But we've here in recent weeks, we've gotten into some into a little bit more meteor uh, uh, for you more sophisticated and, yeah. rednecks, and, yeah, yeah. For the for those that think they're smart, and and so we come back and and touch on some of those things. But I'm going to get real basic. Too, all right, all right? right. And so real basic. And so if you're if you're listening on the radio, you're missing my great uh, graphic. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, which is basically just a a big dr- uh, dry easel. Yeah, and it's the sl- law. It's the supply and demand chart. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, and people will say, and I used to have people when I was in money management. Why is the market going up? I said because there's more buyers than sellers. Uh-huh. And what does that imply? That implies that the demand is rising, and so then guess what? The price is going to go up. Yeah. So if you got more people than here, so you got here, so you got to go up in price to get the extra shares. Yeah. All right. Guess what? Crypto's no different. The only difference is, is that a lot of cryptos is psychological. Because like I've said, you know, there's not hard earnings reports. There's not hard assets behind some of these because a lot of these are embryonic, um, proof uh, of concept, proof of concept, <clears throat> you know, uh, building out the infrastructure is, right. is Alex likes to say. Yeah, yeah. But guess yeah. what? <laughs> the laws of sli- supply and demand don't change. And so just because we're dealing in that world, it's not going to change the laws of supply and demand. Just like if you deal in the stock market, you still have the laws of supply and demand. If you go down and you're trying to buy something at a garage sale, guess what? There's laws of supply and demand. If you have two bidders for that old nickel That's item. Right. <laughs> That's right. So now all these people that are out there saying, I want college education for free, I want health care for everybody for free, Nobody, <laughs> nobody explained to them the laws of supply and demand. Okay, yep. now, granted, in our next hour, we're going to cover the difference between socialism, capitalism, and free enterprise. All right, and hopefully, if if your station doesn't carry our second hour, you know, get on the website and check this out because you're going to find this interesting, especially if you're a, a millennial that has any leanings towards socialism. Yeah, you know, hopefully, I'm going to to turn you into uh, somebody that understands free enterprise and that that's really where it needs to so be. So they're no longer pro-Venezuela? Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know. So so anyway, so here's the deal. With the loss of supply and demand, what's going to happen with cryptocurrency? Well, we've been sitting here explaining to you that the demand for the underlying core technology blockchain that has created cryptocurrency is doing nothing but going to go up. You bet. All right? So here again, this is... Down here is quantity, so we want this many people have involvement, so all of a sudden there's more, so we go from 500 people to 5,000 people to 50,000 people, and so what's going to happen is is the price of that commodity is going to go up. You bet. 
the question is, is how much of that going up in price of the, of the commodity is people that have the skill sets to design these blockchains? And then how much is, is, is it going to be, um, somebody actually purchasing the blockchain through one of the current cryptocurrency blockchains that are offering their blockchain for use? Okay. So there's still some sticky wicket in it. Yeah. But for those of you that sit out there and say, and, and, well, do you know the name of that guy in Vegas? We'll go ahead and call him out on the radio and, and, inter, and introduce him to the law of supply and demand. Oh, I really don't want to talk to him. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so he was, an, he was really angry the whole time. Oh, he was. He was a very angry man. Very that's all, angry that's man. all right. I'm, I'm, a very, I'm a clip. very big man. I don't care about angry <laughs> man. So anyway, but what, what the point that I'm making is, is this, is that as this demand is increasing, yes, he might be right that that cryptocurrency over there's blockchain can't stand the test of time. But, you know, um, Decatur, man, is that good? Because I, I can't usually remember anybody's <laughs> name. Decatur has got the blockchain that can go off, off-site or right. off-chain, outside a chain, for different parameters for a smart contract. Right. Okay, for me, that's like bells and whistles. Okay? Yeah. Okay, because I can, I can envision all of the ways that that can be done. What I also can envision is that's not something that, some of these big companies is going to necessarily going to try and spend the time to replicate themselves. Yeah, right. they're going to they're going to come in and say, just go, just go, strike a license a, this, yeah, kind license of deal. to Cotter, let us we're get our hands it right on now it now when everything's low. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so we're going to we're going to do that. And so you, your guy might be right. There's going to be companies that don't make the muster, but with a rising demand for blockchain technology, sure, is going to be rising prices. You bet. Yeah. Doesn't mean that all boats are going to rise with it, but it does mean that prices are going to rise. Yeah. The and, overall market will, yeah. And you're not going to find the wholesale catastrophe of the market that, that he's expecting. No, no. Okay. On the flip side. Yeah. All right. Cause there, cause there's always a flip side. On the flip side is, is what happens if the demand for cryptocurrency goes down? At the same time that you have the demand for blockchain and other other things that cryptocurrency has created goes up, then you have price erosion. Uh-huh. You'll stay stable for a while, but then all of a sudden the prices will start to drop. Cryptocurrency is especially vulnerable to that set of circumstances, and the reason being is is there's no there's no alternatives. You can't determine the price elasticity of of the value of the coin because you have nothing to compare it to right yeah okay and so it's it's a it's a fairly isolated pricing mechanism that's why for instance with your edison coin right and other coins that are coming online that are going to be more involved with kind of generalized business you know they will have a leg up on the the pricing model that they'll be gauged with right because they'll be gauged in a more traditional manner of what did the money get invested in and and how are the returns of what it got invested in? Right. Because then you're coming in and businesses that are at, at sales, already sales, expanding, so on and so forth, rather than somebody trying to build infrastructure. Yeah. But unfortunately, the laws of supply and demand don't seem to be known by a whole lot of people. I don't think the people in Washington have a clue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? Because what they attempt to do is, is they basically come in and say, we're going to set the price here. We don't care what the laws of supply and demand dictate. We don't even care what your cost structure dictates. Yeah. That's what you're going to sell it to us. Yeah. Okay. So what happens in a market? And let's take healthcare because actually I know quite a bit about that. Let's talk, let's talk about healthcare. All healthcare is, is the lig- is the biggest Ponzi scheme going. Yeah. It and is. it's the biggest basically cost shifting. That goes on. Most people, now granted, you may not get a kidney transplant or you may not get a heart transplant or whatever, but we don't have groves of people dying in the streets. This is America that just, that just doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. Now what we do have is, is who's paying for all the health care that everybody's getting? And so subsequently, the government comes in and says, we're Medicare, we're only paying this. Right. We're down here. Oh, by the way, even though our price is down here, our demand's way over here. Right. And so, and so, you know, we control a huge block of, of the healthcare that goes on in America, and we're going to arbitrarily tell you that that's what you're going to charge. 
At the same time that they're doing that, they're arbitrarily telling the doctors, you can only see so many patients a, uh, an hour. Right. You know, forget the fact, you know, in our, in our part of the world, uh, cedar fever hits. And yeah. it's not, it's not far away. What, yeah. about a month away now? Oh, yeah, we're about a month. And, you First know, when, cold spell. Yeah, yeah, when cedar fever hits, mm-hmm. everybody gets sinusitis. Oh, yeah. And literally the doctors just, they just line up. Yeah. You know, here they line up out the door. And, and so if there's ever a time that that law is the stupidest law going, it's when everybody in town has sinusitis and is looking for, for a, a, a prescription. Yeah. yeah. All right. But guess what? You know, the doctors have to just dole out their time and so on and so forth. So the government not only controls how you do business, they control you what you can, what you can charge to them. So then what happens is, is even though we're all paying taxes for the people that are on, on Medicare anyway, okay? Yeah. And they're paying a premium. Even in spite of that, you have cost shifting. We're denying the laws of supply and demand. And now we're going to have a whole nother block of society that goes out and is paying for that. Right. You bet. Because the doctor's got rent. If he's got 30% of his patients over here that pay below market and aren't contributing to his rent, well, then guess what? He's got to charge the rest of the people more. That's right. Real simple. Okay. He's going to make it I always up. thought it was really weird that if you go to the doctor and uh, they think you're going to use insurance, they'll quote you a number. And right. Let's just say $1,000. And then you say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not using insurance. I'm going to pay cash. All of a sudden, it's $300. Yeah. And I'm I, th- that was a mental breakdown for me because I'm like, well, wait, why isn't it not just $300 anyway? You right. know? And, you, and, and you know what? It's $300 because that's the law of supply and demand price. Yeah. The government right. um, mandated mandated kind of the bastardized system that we got going is the other price. Yeah. And so what happens is is you have cost shifting going to all the other people that are doing it, and then there's another layer of cost shifting between those that have insurance with the large companies, right, versus insurance with the small companies because the large insurance companies go and get a little bit of a break, and so on and so forth. And then sometimes you can go in and try and if and if they're going to try and charge you cash. It might be a thousand dollars where everybody else is getting it for three hundred. Yeah. Okay. Because there isn't the law of supply and demand in that. And so, folks, uh, you young people, research this. Google the law of supply and demand. Read some things about it because you really need to understand this. It will. It will. Uh, Illuminate your life. Yeah, it, a lot of things guy, will you, start making sense. You bet. Yeah. So, so what's the equilibrium point for Bitcoin? <laughs> ah, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's where the supply and the demand meet. And guess what? Oh, no, I was asking what's the number. No, that's, <laughs> that's different every day. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I think we're about to run out of time, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. You that's got the, it. That's the end of the first segment of the Schoolhouse, and we'll be back to Wild West Crypto Show in next, two minutes. In two minutes. Wild, wild west. The wild, wild west. If we get with it, maybe it won't sound so bad. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the wild west crypto show. <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking earlier about how the uh, the uh, the sampling of Cool Modi's Wild Wild West <laughs> kind of ends in the video portion of of our show. So it's. I said, you know, it's just three white guys up there going, wow, 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 we need some help. So wow, wow, they're, they're getting jiggy with it. But guess what? <laughs> it, no more jiggity because it's schoolhouse. Sit down and shut up. Ah, teacher, I got to go pee. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to go ahead, and today we're going to talk about socialism, capitalism, and free enterprise. Yes. And it's driving me nuts Listen to people on TV that are supposedly smart uh, talk about socialism is going to solve this, that, and the other thing. You mean like Bernie? And, yeah. And, and then it drives me crazy. The people that are, are, um, illogical in some of their crony capitalism that they are, think are actually capitalism and, and <laughs> yeah. the difference. So we're going to go back to the basics, just like we went in the first hour of the basics of supply and demand. We're going to go back to the basics of definition of these. And so then I can kind of explain to you the differences. And hopefully for some of the my redneck buddies, I can just educate you, period, because I know you just get out of sixth grade, but you're doing good, bud. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and and for those that are millennials and they're, that are overeducated, I'm going to hopefully give you a real education other than in feeling about yourself and, and someone else. So let's talk about capitalism. Definite, and I'm, I'm, this is simple, simple stuff. Webster Dictionary, capitalism, an economic system characterized by private or corporate ownership of capital goods by investments that are determined by private decision and by prices, production, and the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition in a free market. Huh. Well, it sounds like supply and demand. Yes, but <laughs> let me tell you something. All right? 
The question is, in America, do we have capitalism? Not really. All right? Determined mainly by competition in a free market. It's not a free market. It, yeah. I mean, there is some. We do have some capitalism. Like, And I'll give you an example. When you're talking about medical earlier, right? it's not, not really a capitalistic method. However, some medical is. Because if you go to a plastic surgeon, right, that is a capitalistic and it's in the medical profession, and those guys advertise on billboards, and they you can negotiate prices yes, with them. Yes, you can. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you can even get them to take Bitcoin. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And then and then get them to give you a discount because you taught them something. Yeah. So yeah, very much. <laughs> yeah. Free enterprise. Oh, uh, I tell you what. Yeah, you're right. It's a version of it. Yeah. But I don't think it's really the version that we all really are, think it is. Okay. And and here again, let's look at what I prefer, which is free enterprise. Right. So let's look at the definition of free enterprise. Freedom of private business to organize and operate for profit in a competitive system without interference by government beyond regulation necessary to protect public interest and keep the national economy in balance. So guess what? Free enterprise, if you have free enterprise, you probably have the antitrust law, Uh huh. and that's about it. Uh huh. All right. So guess what? For many, many years, we broke up Standard Oil, okay, yeah, yeah. Rockefellers, over over that, over the public interest and and protection of the national economy and keeping it in balance. So antitrust laws, I'm I'm all for. Yeah. Okay. Because the problem with free enterprise and thereby also capitalism is, what is its preferred state? Where is it really trying to go? Up. <laughs> it's it's. Ultimately, it's trying to become a monopoly. Right. Oh, yeah. And so every business's ultimate desire is to be able to monopolize the industry that they're in. And then once they monopolize the industry that they're in, then what they do is they start to vertically integrate and horizontally integrate because now they're going to monopolize the people that are selling stuff to them. And they're going to monopolize the people that are selling stuff to them. And then pretty soon you're Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or Walmart. Uh, or Walmart yeah. or so on and so forth. And so basically antitrust laws are one of the things that protects the general good. All right. So as you can see, free enterprise is very different than capitalism. Right. Yeah. You know, capitalism is an economic system. I don't really believe we have capitalism. In fact, I consider our capitalism a matrix of legislated monopolies. I'm going to repeat that because I think this is profound because I thought it. (laughs) It's a matrix of legislated monopolies. And so what do I mean by that? You and I are elevator people. You know, (laughs) Drew, I'm in the middle of buying an elevator. a little bit of a burr under your saddle. And an elevator is about $10,000, $15,000 worth of stuff and about uh, $65,000 to $75,000 worth of graft. Yeah. And so what you and I do is is we go, you know what, we're going to go to Congress and we're going to force everybody to buy elevators that basically are the elevators that you and I make. And, in fact, if they're not installed by one of the installers that we authorize to be our installer, then they shouldn't be able to put that elevator in because we're saving the public. We're saving the public. Yeah. Oh, God, are we saving the Everybody's saving the public while they're getting rich, okay? Yeah. So we're saving the public. And then next thing you know, the cost of elevators – is contrary to the law of supply and demands. They're able to inflate the price. Why? Through government legislation. Yeah. And so literally our federal government has been selling monopoly power one law at a time for decades. Oh, yeah. Many, many decades. Well, I mean, okay? it, as an example, go back. You and I will remember this. Alex and these younger folks won't. But if you remember, the airline industry used to be heavily regulated. Oh, yeah. The prices were all set. And when they deregulated airline industry, all of a sudden, and even today, it's incredible. You can fly all the way around the world round trip for a few hundred bucks, you know, and that's pretty incredible. But that's because they deregulated that industry because regulation propped all these prices up. So that was that legislative monopoly you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Legislative monopoly. So basically, so now let's, let's, let's give a quick definition for socialism. Okay. Wait, wait, can I do it first sure. from a millennial standpoint? Sure. I'm not a millennial, but uh, you know, I've watched enough of these. Uh, so socialism is where everything's free and everybody loves each other and nobody has to work and we all have abundance. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so That's so, what we want. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, want. Socialism, any of the various economic and political theories advocating collective 
or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods. That can only be advocated by somebody that's never done a damn thing. <laughs> because if you've ever built anything, if you've ever had to deal with the state government, the federal government, if you've ever had to deal with the EPA, the uh, TCEQ, that's Texas Quality Control People, uh, you know, all of these people are just one bubble off a of plum. So oh, yeah. two, okay? Yeah. And literally it's like, we're the government, we're here to screw it up. Yeah. They're accountable to no one, okay? All of them are frustrated developers or think they're developers, but they want to do it with OPM, other people's money, all right? And so if you, you know, all you have to do is look at all of the things the government has run, and that if you want $300 toilet seats, then let the government, you know, do it. I, I, I go back to the old deal. I spent three years living in Vegas, and it was amazing to me that the feds go in and they take over a bordello, and they take over a bar, and they start running them, and they lost money. And if you can't make money in a whorehouse and a bar, yeah, you don't have to make money, right? So you're, 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 you're not real swift. Yeah, yeah. So so here's the deal. One of the Now I'm going to bring it back to cryptocurrency. Yeah. In my opinion, cryptocurrency is the opportunity to get worldwide free enterprise. You bet. All right. I'm not going to disagree and, with that. And what I do not want to see is, is I don't, do not want to see some uneducated younger people fall for this socialist deal because it's never worked. It's not going to work. In fact, if you look at our country, I'm, and you, you know, I'm in the process of putting stuff together to write a book. If you look at a graph of the standard of living in America, okay, and you'll see that graph slowly sloping down and you take a graph that shows you the amount of regulations, the, the number of regulation pages on the books, it's just an inverse. Yeah. In other words, they're they're just going in opposite directions. Inversely proportional to and each I can, other. And yeah. I can take you so many other government activities that all you have to do is look at the graph and go, wow, look at the number of government employees. Look at the amount of GDP that we're spending on them. Look at the amount of regulations. Look at the amount of expense that those regulations are costing business. You know, under free enterprise, if, if I get, if I get Alex to give me five bucks, he's only going to give me five bucks for something that I made because he actually thinks it's worth more than five dollars. Yeah. Right. And I'm only going to give it to him for five dollars because I actually think that it's worth a little less. Yeah. And so he walks away feeling good and I walk away feeling good. Both of us now have had an increase in of our standard of living just because of the decision that we made. But if I now come and tell him, <laughs> oh, guess what? That five dollar elevator? No, it's seventy five thousand dollars. You know, I, I can't sell an eight elevator for five dollars anymore because the government's going to get their cut, and then you got all these laws and all these regulations and so and the on. The regulations and so forth. make you have to put that elevator in. Yeah, and that's that's the real problem is yeah. that you can't build a building that's multi stories without an elevator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and, people, and, and, and then in this country, let me tell you something. Back before we had all the elevators, people were a little slimmer. They are. A bunch of people need to be walking those stairs. Well, that's a whole other show. But anyway, but what my point is, is that all of that interrupts the laws of supply and demand that we talked about earlier. Right. Folks, think free enterprise. Don't, you know, I, young people, you think capitalism sucks. It's really not capitalism. Yeah. It's crony capitalism. It's a legislated monopoly generated by the government because the big government and big business have gotten in bed, and they're not there to screw each other. They're there to screw you. Yeah, well, it's and control so is what it really is. When you understand that, when you understand that, think free enterprise, because free enterprise is what's going to create transparency, and it's also what will create the most efficient flow of money to the highest capital items needed to create the greatest amount of standard of living for the most people. Yeah. And guess what? Socialism has never beaten that. Crony capitalism can't beat that. In fact, you know, you talk about greed. Oh, it's those greedy people. Well, if it's free enterprise, who's greedy? Alex, because he gave me $5 or me because I gave him the thing that I made? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I just think about my house and how I kind of run it like a socialist government. Like, cause, but, the, but the, And I want to say this because at the end of the year, I realize that I lose every year because I'm giving more to the house, to my roommates, to my friends, to my family that, that come and live with me. You know, I'll pay for the toilet paper. Nobody else pays for toilet paper. I'm losing money on that toilet yeah, paper. Yeah. But I'm providing a nice, stable place 
for all these people to live. But who loses at the end of the year? I do. Yeah, right. so now. And I think about free enterprise and how I'm starting to move more towards that, towards yeah. the house. Well, hey, so, see, sell that toilet paper two feet, in, uh, two feet length at a time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it allows me to have more money to then at the end of the year do more for them uh, as far as good and not just uh, wants, more needs as opposed to, uh, to wants. So, well, no, it's funny because that's how like, so the last here, five years has been going. Here's the question. We have 300 million people in this country. Would you rather trust the buying decisions of 300 million people or would you rather trust the legislation decision of 385 people? That, that are also being lobbied. Oh, yeah. Well, they're yeah. under the table, over the table, and oh, behind yeah, the exactly. table. You know, you have to ask yourself one more question. I'll end with this. How do you make $175,000 a year as a senator or congressman, work there for 30 years, and retire with $40 million? <laughs> yeah, I know. Math doesn't add up, does it? <laughs> math yeah. doesn't add up. Yeah. Come on, math, teacher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we don't even, uh, my calculator doesn't even have that high rate of return. <laughs> hey, hey, this is Wild West Crypto Show, and teacher... I gotta go home. All right. We're out of here. We'll see you next week, folks.